Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Alatherix. And of course, welcome back to the campaign where today we have a very, very simple goal. All I wish to do today is make this tech a little bit better. Already, it's rapidly becoming one of my all-time favourite combat techs because it does seem so versatile, it's not oversized, it's not using missiles for once. I just find it a really, really fun tech to use. But we can definitely make it better straight after I kill this thing. Now, if your shield's just not loaded... Wow, you have loads of shields on the front there. Really want to use the geo weapons for once? There we go. Excellent. So how are we going to improve this tech? It's certainly not perfect, and I think we can make it a little bit closer to that unattainable goal. The very first thing I want to do is change how it gets energy. Now, I am going to be keeping the little underslung solar panels because they're just really, really helpful, but I also want this to be able to knock down trees and harvest the resources around us. So, burning trees, burning coal, burning the enemies, throwing things at things. I want it to be able to do all of those, and the throwing things at things is actually a thing I'm talking about in a serious manner. That wasn't even me being all that silly, because I want it to be able to grab resources and then at very minimum drop them. At very maximum, sort of look like it's throwing them to the side, as if it's processing them using the droppers from GSO. And as you can probably tell, I'm running on about two hours sleep at the moment, so this can only go incredibly well. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, everything's fine. Yep. Do we live? Good. That was intentional. That was just as neat as I expected. And this area is quite pretty. Good. This will be our staging ground. Now I'm going to wait here until daytime so that we can see what we're doing a little bit better. So I'm just going to anchor up and um, get myself a drink. It's daytime. The birds are singing, the flowers are blooming, and techs are blowing up all around us. So, let's get to work with our little tech then. So, the first thing is, how are we going to harvest things and then consume them? Well, I was thinking about perhaps using the mobile delivery cannon instead of the original item, which of course was the dropper. Because then, essentially, what we're dropping is we are selling rather than just dropping. We are making use of glorious capitalistic ways, which would indeed make me very happy. But the question is, can I put this on its side? Can you side mount a delivery cannon? No, you can't. Well, the style I wanted simply vanished just then, but I still think it's okay. But we will have to go with Venture. And I kind of hate that. I really do. I was hoping to go as much as possible with anything except for Venture. Hawkeye and GSO obviously with the main, but GSO can sort of blend in? Yeah, Geo is main, Hawkeye main, GSO blend. Oh, of course, they have the mobile delivery cannon with GSO now. They just don't have the mobile refinery. So we could still do this, but we would lose the mobile refinery for the sake of style, which would make this horribly inefficient which somewhat annoys me as well. So what annoys me more? Leaving the theme more or making everything horribly inefficient? Well, I normally make things horribly inefficient, but this time I wanted it to be efficient for once, and instantly I have questions. If we don't use the refinery, this would be a lot more simple as well, which would be nice. It'd be a lot more compact, but once again, less efficient because blocks which are refined will give you more energy. Thus, you're getting more energy per area destroyed, which is very nice. Although, I guess if we are going inefficient, at least we will destroy all of nature. I mean, why only destroy half of nature when you can destroy everything? But what about this instead? The plasma furnace. Question. Does the plasma furnace actually work yet? And does it work when you're not anchored. Well, first of all, let's see if it works in general. Eat this. If this works, it'd be far more interesting because then we're not using GSO or anything else. Okay, it's definitely using regular fuel and now let's use this as well. Beautiful. It will devour anything. The problem is it's a 3x3, three three, which is really awkward for how we built our craft. That would be really cool though. We'd no longer... Well, we'd be able to harvest any resource to get fuel. Wow, we could even use scrappers. We could scrap the enemies for fuel. That sounds horrible. I love it. Okay, definitely using the plasma furnace for once. So all of you can go ask the bye-bye. 
Although, like I said before though, I do need to figure out if that works when anchored. I've got a sneaking suspicion that no. And of course I meant to say we're not anchored. Let's just throw this on for a second. Ta-da, okay, we're currently not anchored. Feeding it a block of timber. Not even letting me place it, really. Let's anchor up. Yep, yeah, it turns on when anchored. That is a problem. I would like it to be able to give us power whilst we're on the move. I guess I could have both. I could have a collection for the plasma fern. No, simple. Um, we have it so that the fuel blocks go to the mobile refinery, then everything else gets stored until we are stationary, and then gets fed into the plasma furnace. Nice and simple. This looks so silly and over the top for what it needs to do, but I've just placed it like this because it's going to be so much easier to cover up afterwards. So all we have is a single collector here. This collects into this silo. We have two silos, which can both hold the normal amount of resource, and at regular intervals we have the furnace generators. So no matter how much resource we have, there's no way that fuel will just be sitting there unable to reach a generator, except for if one gets stuck here or here. And that should be it, yep. Oh, or here. So actually there's three places, but that's incredibly unlikely if it doesn't reach one of these first. And if we do get resources all the way back to here, this can feed into this directly. So it's not like this has no connection to this either. All well and good. And then at the very bottom we have the plasma furnace, which means we can harvest pretty much anything. Observe. It actually gets there surprisingly quickly. Also, no graphics on these, but they are definitely working. They just look a bit inert. So, let's cover this back up, and now we have an ulterior power source. An ulterior power source, an alternative power source. And apparently, a menacing ulterior motive, which is to destroy nature, of course. Well, that actually looks pretty neat. Yeah, I like how that looks. It still looks all construction-y. I was a bit worried that we'd lose that, and I definitely don't want the pacemaker. In fact... Pacemaker set to regular, otherwise we'll burn through things too fast, which I believe doesn't even give you the full energy, which is really horrible. If it does, I might put it back, but until then I'll just throw it on the floor. So now, we shouldn't have any issues with blocks glitching out, except for these two furnaces. Yeah, those will glitch out a little bit, but it'll be a purely visual problem, it won't really affect anything, I hope, and we'll very quickly find out if that's the case. This is here, so it doesn't interact with this. Just have this here for looks. These will go out the back and not really interact with anything. Okay, yeah. And I do like how it looks. Um, need to keep this bit open, though, for these two. So, let's get these things removed. Let's go harvest some stuff. Let's make sure everything works as intended. That took way too long. Such a simple concept, but my mind is apparently not fast enough for it at the moment. Um, let's put you there. And let's put you... There. There's the visual problem I was talking about, and yet it can go straight through the blocks. There is no actual issue, it just looks really silly when it's stuck on top. And then we anchor. And now we should burn through the regular blocks. Which we are. Okay, good. We can now harvest anything. Lovely. So, next thing I want to fix then is just this. I want to remove these bottom engines because they are really irritating. They're the only block which occasionally takes damage when I'm moving around. So, really simple quick fix. Just that. That's it. The problem is though, that doesn't look as good. Eh, it looks okay. It doesn't look attached anymore. Do we have the three-pronged version? Yes, we do. And now it looks okay again. Still not as nice as it did, but it'll be fine. Next question. Do I want to add the mobile SCU to this thing? I could do, but I feel like it's going to just cause more problems than I really want it to solve. It would get blocks constantly stuck on this craft, and there's too many little corners and stuff where blocks are just going to be constantly stuck. So, let's ignore that. So, next step, talking about the angles. Now, one thing I do want to test out is this. Simply flipping some of these weapons. How will that 
affect their arc of fire. I don't think it's going to help us because it still has the issue of simply running into the blocks underneath it. It's not that the weapon can't aim down, it's that there's things in the way. Although, I really like how that looks. I really like how it looks. Okay, uh, going to flip these weapons anyway. Shouldn't really affect how the thing functions, but nice. So weirdly, this is actually a fair while later, and I've got to be honest, I'm sort of giving up on the ability to tilt. I've cut out all of that footage because it was just horrendous. Every time I thought I was onto something, either the ability to climb went away, or I just didn't like how it looked. So instead, what we've done is we've moved these three weapons forwards, and we've also moved these two weapons forwards, and honestly, it doesn't look too bad. It hasn't really changed the style of the craft very much, and it has gave some of our weapons a better firing arc. This won't completely solve the problem, we are still vulnerable to enemies below us, but I feel like that's just something we're going to have to deal with. I've also done the same with these, as you can see, so yeah, we can fire at things underneath us now a little bit better, so I am considering that a success, even if it was some of the most boring footage which I've probably not even used. So now, I just want to go and do some missions. It's been a while since we've just done some missions, so let's go ahead and get that done. But first, let's burn some resources. Hello, fuel. I'll be grabbing that, thank you very much. That now moves to the silo. And yep, yeah, both of the furnace generators are in use. Fantastic. Let's go and do this one. And this one. Although the chance of us finding this in time is somewhat slim from such a slow craft, but we'll get there. But first, I love just how many shots are hitting the enemy. Sure, they're all being absorbed by shields, but it's fine. I looked away for one second and it threw its megaton cannon at us. <laughs> really should have grabbed all that, but oh well. Oh, I thought this is one of those missions where you had to go into a specific area for a second. Nope, it's just right there. Look, there's a delivery crate. This is gonna hurt. Yep, a little bit. Oh, I just thought I didn't add the shields to the back. That's fine. And that was very easy. Hopefully the next one is an actual fight. That would be very nice. Look at me gaining energy while I'm just relaxing. How lovely. Excellent, time for some fighting. Hello, little fellow. That looks lovely. The one we're currently killing. And we still have fuel currently being used. Lovely, as it is being passed on to at least one of our furnaces. Okay, one thing I will, I will say is though, I hate this. Just how much resource the silo can hold, I think it looks stupid. Like, really stupid. I think when both of them are full, maybe it'll look a little bit better, but right now, I can't stand that. I will be replacing it with something else. After a bit of tinkering, this is what I've came up with. So, I have completely removed the center silo. We only have a silo here, and instead of storage, we just have this movable section, which I think looks so, so much better. Even when it has resources, it looks really nice, and it still gives to all the sections just like the old silos. So, all is well, all is good, it will look far better. We do have this section here still for storage, which will still go out of the back, but because it's not in the center and so far back with all this machinery on the side, it doesn't look like it's sort of originating from the inside of the craft, which is what I sort of had a problem with. It looked really silly, but because we can see the origin point, it just looks like a harvesting section now, which I think is way, way better. And apparently there is an enemy nearby. Well, here's a good test for our weapons. Oh, you have missiles and cannons. Well, a dangerous test. 
So the two ones on the side here still can't fire, but yet the center is now firing even at this angle. So are the two front two. Yep, we can now fire down way better. A minor change with massive results. Lovely. So, that's two of our major concerns today completely solved. No idea why I did that when I could just use the thrusters. Still kind of hurting the front whenever we do a um, steep drop, but I think that's just something we're going to have to accept unless we change what wheels we're using. Oh no, we're running out of power. If only there were natural resources nearby. I'll be accepting you. Thank you very much. That looks weird too. Yeah, a lot of weird things today. Let's grab some more missions. Excuse me, nature. You are in the way of my war. Lovely. Being able to fire down is definitely making us way more versatile. That was a weird angle, but it worked. Slowly becoming a really, really versatile craft. So, what missions do you have for me? Incoming! Lovely. And lost baggage. But let's do incoming first. Defend the, check the tech for its duration. Yes, sir. But first, there's an enemy here about to spawn. Sorry, lad. A little bit ahead in time here. This has been one of the easiest missions for a while. Just very small enemy after very small enemy. Ooh. You had some pretty cool stuff on you, but sadly I think you mostly detonated. But just look at this guy I'm defending. It's like one of those little rides you see outside of shops and stuff where you just pay like a very small amount of money just does a set motion over and over again. It's adorable, but very weird. In 20 seconds, that's one more mission complete, then we'll go and do Lost Baggage. Ah, oh, he helped me in the last fight. Oh, no, this is the last fight. Oh no, his spinning circle has been disrupted! Oh, that's a sad. That's even more sad, but still. Let's grab our rewards. That is one brave soul. Look at him, bam. Well, Geocorp weapons finally get the kill. I don't feel like I've really done all that much to the craft today, but everything I've done has taken me way too long. I am really happy with the result, but I feel like we need to do a little bit more. So how about we take a look-see at a secondary weapon. So I want a weapon which won't overshadow the autocannons. The autocannons need to be the main weapon, otherwise it's going to feel a little bit weird. So, what if we first of all reattach this because I forgot these got removed. There we are. But then we could add something like maybe the DFA mortar, the tiny little mortar from Hawkeye, which is on a rotating turret. The problem with these is that they don't like things being in front of them. Yet there won't work. And over here, most likely some of the shots won't activate. Yet that didn't go through. Neither did that. That did. That did. That did. That didn't. So one in four. What about here? Remove that. Let's place that here. So what these can do, because they can also follow the target, is they could provide some support to the sides, but most importantly, they can fire up hills. And they should be able to hit pretty much anything under us as well still, so... Wait, did one shot really not work then? One. Didn't work. Two. Yeah, they do not like having anything nearby. That one didn't work. That's going to be a bit of an issue then, since I don't really want to start rearranging stuff purely for these. And that just looks weird. So what am I going to do about that then? I guess what we could do is maybe... Add two doubles. Then have two sets like this. Then try to blend that in. Maybe that will be worth it.
Yeah, that works. But then the cabs are sort of blocked as well, so that doesn't look as good. Darn it, I don't know how I want to do this. So this works, we have three on both sides. Still not enough firepower to really overshadow anything, but right now what I want to test is how far they can rotate. Yeah, it looks like they can rotate directly behind us, which is really good. Now, of course, they can't hit anything point blank, so it's not like they're going to overshadow the other weapons, but they're still nice, which is exactly what I wanted. Now, I'm going to put you two here and here. I'm going to remove you. And then, to make it all look a little bit better at the back, let's add a couple of the medium armors. Yeah, that looks really nice, actually. Okay. I'd prefer they weren't there at all, but considering their functionality, really happy. And I still haven't added the shields back yet. Latherix, what do you need to do? Shields, that's right. But where are they even going to go? Yeah, there's a problem. I don't know... Well, I guess we don't actually need that section, so just go ahead and put the shield there. And then for the equivalent, we take out this, we put the shield in there. And then put down a regular block to blend it again. And then we have full shielding. Ooh, not quite. These two have a tiny little bit exposed there in the corner. Actually, no, they don't because the others on top are overlapping it. Never mind, we are now once again fully shielded. Lovely. That is very cool. I've been toying around with the idea of adding weapons to the back to enable us to combat enemies which have got around us and are attacking our honestly quite vulnerable looking backside. And I've decided to do this. So we have the tiny little Hawkeye machine gun and the even smaller Hawkeye burst gun. The reason why I'm using these is that they're nice and small, we can place them symmetrically very easily, and they won't really draw the attention from anything else. And honestly, they should get the job done against very small, very frail enemies. And the best thing is, when I'm holding down fire normally, these won't fire. But then as soon as they're targeting an enemy, they will be firing because they are no longer facing the tech itself. At least, that's the idea. And to make sure this works, going to place this one on its side so it can definitely face all the way backwards. I think this one will work like that, but let's just make sure at least one of them works. Okay, let's find an enemy, do a test, and if that works, I am calling the episode, I think. I can't think of what else I really want on this tech. I don't want it to harvest, I don't want it to hold resources for other things, I want it purely as a mission completer. Hello there, small enemy. Small guns, go! Yeah, they worked. At least that one worked over there. It was a bit hard to tell, it was a very quick fight. Let's um, find another enemy to test out on. Hello there, new test subject. After looking at the footage just then, it looks like the smaller guns weren't working. But now I've placed them here. Yep, they are definitely targeting the enemy, so if I press fire... There we are. The middle guns work if the enemy is here, the machine guns work if they are just outside. That's fine. Not the most effective things in the world, but it works. Oh, I just thought, we have the space free now. That works too. And that'll definitely work, because these can definitely fire behind them. I believe. Well, if not, we can always use other weapons, but I don't know if I like how they look. Well, I'm afraid I am all out of time for today's video. A lot of decision making and a lot of me just looking at the screen trying to make any choice. I think right now, the craft is as done as I can think to make it. If you have any idea what else I can add to this craft without completely changing its purpose, then please feel free to tell me in the comments below. And with that, if you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that Terra Tech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. I really, really like this craft, and I think it's going to be my go-to mission completer, since that is its only real purpose, and it does so very well. So, thank you for watching, do take care, and goodbye. Also, at some point, I apparently lost a solar panel. I'll fix that in a second. Bye-bye.